Hey guys, welcome back to the Chicago White Sox franchise. In this episode, we will be finishing off the month of July. We're not going to sim past the trade deadline. We're going to sim up right to it. So we'll show at the end of this video where we're at, where everyone's at in the standings, and how everyone's doing to see who we might be possibly trading away in the next episode. Also be showing our draft in the after game one of this episode. We're going to play the Guardians, and then we're going to show the draft. So hopefully you're looking forward to that one as we'll draft our new up and coming superstars for the future hopefully at least we should have a nice and early pick uh stay tuned for that one as here we are eight and a half games out of first place 42 and 46 we're still hovering around five hovering around 500 surprisingly it's not that far off but we are sinking for sure as we're going up against the cleveland guardians in this one and it's sam henkis gets the ball he is not a starting pitcher he's a reliever uh but he gets the ball in this one so i guess he's just going to be opening as he has not started a game all season, but he's been doing great in 17 innings pitched. On the mound for us is a reliever turn starter. He's making his eighth start of the season. His ERA is up there, though, 4.89. I'm not sure if this whole starting thing's going to work out for Crochet, but we will see. Time will tell. They can maybe make him our closer since we've struggled so much in that position. But I don't want to give up on the starting experiment just yet. Um, I'll talk more about that later on. Is in, our first highlight here is in the top of the third. Is it's Paul DeYoung with the leadoff double. So Paul DeYoung's on second, nobody out. Next up is Max Stassi. You see, he brought his average up to 331. He lines one into right center field, caught by the right fielder, but tagging and going to third is Paul DeYoung. And he's just going to sneak in there because that throw is offline. So we have a runner on third, one out for one of our best hitters this season, Andrew Benintendi. He's going to fly out to shallow right center, medium-ish, and this should be deep enough to score the run. If he tagged from third in the same spot, he should be safe at home, and he is. Paul DeYoung scores. And it's 1-0 in the third. We're going to the top of the fourth. It's Luis Robert leading off. He smashes one to right field. Going back to right fielder. He looks up and this is going to one-hop off the wall. Luis Robert rounds first. He's headed for second. A good throw probably beats him. But the throw just a little offline. And Luis Robert's in there with the leadoff double. Later on in the fourth, we'd get another runner on. But it would be first and second. One out for uh, Colson Montgomery. And he would just fly out to center field to end the fourth. We're still up 1-0. Crochet still on the mound here in the bottom of the fourth. Pitching good so far. 50 pitches in, but a beautifully executed hit and run from Cleveland. Gets the runner from first to third, and the Guardians have runners on first and third with one out in the bottom of the fourth. Next up would be Ramon Laureano coming over uh, in, in Cleveland now, and he bloops one. It looked like off the bat this might get down, but Paul DeYoung makes the play two out now next up andres jimenez and jimenez is going to hit one hard but right at yo mancada at third and crochet gets out of the jam so he's through four scoreless so far in this one he's pitching in the bottom of the fifth let's see if he can continue to pitch well and he gets a strike out there from brian rochio one away here in the fifth inning is a couple batters later there is a guy on with two outs and Stephen Kwan bloops one to the left benintendi he's coming on he dives and he oh my goodness he can't make the play it's embarrassing. It goes past Benintendi. And Robert, Luis Robert, has to get it in. And Quan actually going home. He's looking for an inside the park home run, but he is gunned out at the plate. A run scores to tie the game. It's an RBI triple from Steven Quan. And uh, <laughs> that was a bad play from Benintendi. But Quan, I'm not, I'm not sure why he was going home on that one, but he's thrown out. Crochet would pitch into the sixth inning. He would give up a leadoff base hit to Miles Straw, and that would be his last batter. So starting to see more positive signs from Crochet as he goes five plus, only one earned run. And we go to Jar Joe Barlow, one of our best relievers. Um, it's still in the sixth inning, two out, two on for Andres Jimenez. That ball gets away. Max Stassi gets up firing, though, and the runner at third, Miles Straw, is thrown out. Can't make the first or third out at third base, and Miles Straw makes the mistake there. Nice play from Max Stassi. Still in the seventh, though, Joe Barlow's still on the mound, and that's Andres Jimenez going deep to right, and this one's gone. A leadoff home run in the seventh, and the Guardians have a 2 1 lead, so. Maybe if Miles Straw didn't get thrown out at third, that would have been a three-run shot. But can't play that game. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean it would have happened. But Andres Jimenez puts the Guardians up 2-1. Top of the eighth. Two out. Nobody on for Benintendi. And Benintendi rips one down the right field line. Going back to the right fielder. He looks up and it's just out of here. Andrew Benintendi doesn't hit a lot of home runs. I think that's only his fourth of the season. But this one ties the game with two outs in the eighth. It was his fourth home run of the season. Some rare power from Benintendi. And this game's tied in the eighth, bottom of the eighth. Uh, that would be Tanner Banks getting out of the eighth inning with relative ease. And we're going into the ninth with the game tied at two. Top half of the ninth, it's Luis Robert. He smokes one down the right field line. This one's headed towards the wall. It is off the wall. And Luis Robert going for another double. And again, he will just barely beat the throw. Nice slide 
this is a leadoff double. If that ball was a few more inches to the left, it would have been a solo home run. But now we got to work to get Luis Robert home. It's Yon Moncada. He rips a base hit in a right field. Luis Robert's going to hold at third. No need to, to send him with nobody out. And that was a good throw, too. So it's a good thing we didn't send him. Next up, Andrew Vaughn. First and third, nobody out. He lines one in the center field. Miles Straw's going to make the play, but not nearly deep enough. I mean, not nearly uh, close enough to throw out Luis Robert is what I meant. And Luis Robert scores. We have a 3-2 lead in the ninth inning. And Andrew Vaughn comes through with the sack fly RBI to give us the lead. That would be all we'd get in the ninth as Colson Montgomery flies out to center field to end the inning. So we're up by one going into the ninth. We blew a couple saves in the last episode. And this, yeah, Brebbia is still closing. He's been doing a little bit better in the semis. Four of seven now. But, uh, of course, you know, that doesn't mean we trust him all of a sudden. But hopefully he comes through here. It's David Fry leading off. And that one's through the hole. It's a base hit. Lead off base hit in the ninth inning from Andrew Fry, and, uh, you know, it's getting scary already for John Brebbia. Hopefully he can get out of this one. Looks like they're going to bunt with Laurinato, and Andrew Vaughn thinks about going for second, tries to cancel it and go to first, but too slow. Brebbia can't get over in time, and everyone's safe. The Guardians are going to bunt again, and it is just going to get down. It wasn't the best bump, but it got down. Runners out at first. It's second and third. One out. Tying run at third. Winning run at second. It's Brian Rocchio. And he, Rocchio, however you say it, he's going to chop on a third. Yon Mankata. Why was the infield not in? I don't know. I didn't really, I did not think I'd have to put them in, but it wasn't in. Ground ball scores a run. And then it's Dilo Santos with a base hit. Gavin Sheets comes up throwing, but he has no arm in right field. This one's over. Another blown save from Brebbia and another walk off win against us. This season is this time it's the Guardians walking it off with a base hit as yet again, terrible, terrible blown save. Brevia, we're going to get him out of that closing role. Don't even worry. Speaking of the bullpen, though, we're going to help us out. Thank you for the person that pointed out that I did not add Stephen Wilson to the team. He came over from the Padres in that Dylan Cease trade. So we added him now and threw him in there. Who we called down was Jordan Leisure, who was not having the best go out of it. 15 and a third, 5.2 ADRA. He goes down for now, but hopefully we'll see him up in the future. Now, let's look at our draft, and we're going to draft this stud right here, Roger Magana, with the fifth overall pick. That's the pick we had in the draft. He looks like an absolute beast. 22 years old. He's going to be anywhere between 68 and 73, and that potential is going to be anywhere between 85 and 90. Looks like a stud. Second pick, another starter, Harper Goodwin. Another guy who looks like a stud. His potential is anywhere from 77 to 92, and his overall is a, a much higher range, but he was fully scouted. We got two starting pitcher stud prospects. Now, the rest are not as well scouted, but they do look good. Kerry Starks, well, that's a name to watch out for. Pick number 68, first baseman. So keep an eye on him. Same thing with uh, Gregorio Cruz, second baseman. What Much what we needed. The range on him is kind of crazy. Robert Feldus, Feldhaus, another guy to look for. Ryan Savage is another starting pitcher who we just kind of drafted at the end. And John McCain as well, who has promise if he can have any kind of decent overall there. So I can't show the overalls in this game. is a little different. It used to be like you get to see the overalls and potential of the guys right out away when you draft them. If there is a way, let me know. I don't think there is. I signed them all, but I don't see them anywhere. So just let me know if, if you guys know where they might be. But I'm pretty sure I can't get a whole, you know, their whole thing up. But in the offseason when they appear, I will definitely show them again. Anyway... Last game of this episode, we're going up against Kansas City, and it's Brady Singer versus Eric Fetty on the matchup today, and we're going to start right away in the bottom of the first. It's Aloy Jimenez. He's going to chop one up the middle for a base hit. No, Bobby Wood Jr. with the diving play. The throw from his knees gets him from the outfield grass. Wow, what a play from Bobby Wood Jr. there. Fantastic. We're going to go ahead to the top of the third. Royals have first and third, two out, and it's a clutch base hit from Darian Blanco, and that scores a run. It's 1-0 Kansas City in the top of the third. Bobby Wood Jr. would be the next batter up, and he's going to fly this one out to center field. Luis Roberts going to make the catch, so that ends the third inning, top of the third inning, one nothing in Kansas City. I'm going to go ahead a little bit to the bottom of the third. Now it's uh, Andrew Vaughn leading off, and he's going to chop one up the middle for a base hit. So leadoff single for Andrew Vaughn. Hopefully we can get something going out of that one, as next up is going to be Paul DeYoung, and Paul DeYoung is going to rip one right at the second baseman, it goes off the second baseman's glove, and safe at second somehow is going to be Andrew Vaughn, so everyone's safe, it's first and second, nobody out for Max Stassi, and he is going to poke one fair down over the first base bag, Andrew Vaughn will score, Paul DeYoung goes to third, and this game is tied, and we've got first and third 
Nobody out for Andrew Benintendi. And Benintendi, he grounds a second. That's going to be a 4-6-3 double play. Not an RBI, but a run does score. 2-1 to one, Chicago. In the top half of the fourth, Kansas City has a guy on second with two outs. That's a base hit through the hole. Benintendi's going to come up throwing. The throw home is in time, a little offline, but he gets the out. And it's an outfield assist from Andrew Benintendi. We don't get a lot of those in this franchise, so it's good to see when we can. In the fifth, though, Royals threatening again. Another runner on second, no out. Gavin Sheets this time looking for an outfield assist, but no, he never throws the ball online, and this game is tied at two. Uh, Michael Garcia is up next, going down the left field line. Andrew Benintendi on the run. He dives, and maybe he should just stop diving because he has not made a diving play all season. He just keeps making it worse. The runner from first is going to home, and he will score. And the Royals take a 3-2 lead off another missed dive from Andrew Benintendi. They would get that runner over to third, and it would be Bobby Witt Jr. lining one, but right at Paul DeYoung, snags it out of the air to keep the runner at third. And uh, next up is Furman, and he strikes out swinging, so... That runner is stranded, but the Royals take a 3-2 lead as Fetty did not pitch bad again. Colston Montgomery, we don't show a lot of highlights of him because he's been struggling, especially when we've been playing with him. But here he is there with a leadoff base hit in the fifth to get things going. Andrew Vaughn up next, and he crushes one down the left field line. Going back to the left fielder, he's still going back. It is going to be off the wall. Montgomery goes to third, and Andrew Vaughn is going to sneak, just barely get in the second with a double. Second and third, nobody out in the fifth. Paul DeYoung would be up next. He chops this slowly to short, but Montgomery is going to score, and this game is tied at three. That would be it, though, for the fifth because... Uh, we would leave Vaughn stranded at shortstop. Ben Dendy grounds, I mean, at second. Ben, ben and Dendy grounds to shortstop to end the inning. Top half of the six, Tanner Banks on the mound. He's been pitching good when I pitch with him. Look at this play from Andrew Vaughn getting down and dirty for a double play. Pitcher covers, and that's how the sixth inning would go. It's Gavin Sheets, two out, nobody on in the sixth. He's going to draw a walk, so two out walks. Those can be killers sometimes. Next up, Yon Mankata. Brady Singer's still in. And Mankata's going to rip one in a left center field. This one is going to get down. Gavin Sheets not with the best speed, but that ball was just beautifully placed. And Gavin Sheets is going to round third and score easily. And the White Sox take a 4-3 lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Yon Mankata coming through with a clutch RBI double. In the eighth, it is Steven Wilson getting his first action on video. And he works a clean eighth. And he gets a guy on, but no runs come across. That means... We are headed to the ninth. And uh, who is going to close this one out? Well, it is going to be Brebbia. As you see, nobody is going to be on their feet hyped to see Brebbia come out of the bullpen for closing time. I don't even know why it's a graphic with him. Just got a pr It's praying time is what it is. That one's ripped to right field. Drew Waters, though, lines it right at Gavin Sheets for the first out. So far, so good. Kyle Isbell up next. And he's going to hit one hard, too. But Montgomery snags that one. So two out, nobody on. Austin Nola, last chance for the Royals. And he's going to hit one up the middle, but Brebbia knocks it down, throws to first, and he finally gets a save here. And the White Sox are going to win. Nice come from behind win there. 4-3 win from Chicago. And we beat the Kansas City Royals. Well, here we are. We're at the trade deadline. And like I said, I'm not going to make any trades this video. I'm going to make them in the next one. If you have any suggestions, let me know. I think I know what I'm going to do, but uh, I would always love to hear what you guys think. Uh, so there's the trade deadline, and we're just going to show this whole standings from around the league. We are 13 and a half games out of the Central. Twins are running away with this thing in the Central Division. It's the Orioles leading in the AL East. The Rays and Red Sox behind them. Blue Jays and Yankees are in last place. Yikes. What's going on with the Yanks this season in the Sim? Probably the starting pitching letting them down, if I had to guess. But uh, who knows in, in this game, honestly. We move ahead to the West. It's the Astros with an eight and a half game lead early on. It's Texas, the defending champs. They're eight and a half games back, but they still have a decent record. Mariners are right in at two. Um, not for the division, but the wild cards. You see the Rays, Rangers, and Mariners are in the wild card. Red Sox and Blue Jays right there. Even the Yankees are only three games back, even though they're last place in the division. So it's still it's still open. Guardians and Royals still competing as well. We're seven and a half out, but look at all those teams ahead of us. It's no point. The A's, Angels, and Tigers are all worse than us in the American League. In the National League, it's the Braves as expected in first. Phillies in second, I would say. That's about how you'd expect. The Mets are 39-70. and 70. Oh my goodness. I, know, I didn't think they were going to be good this season, but 39-70? and 70? My gosh. My gosh. I don't even know what I was about to say. The Reds have the best record in the National League, and I think maybe in baseball. Yeah, I think in base 71. I don't think anyone in the American League had it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Cubs are doing pretty good, and they're nine games back, and it's the Dodgers leading the West. 
by five games over Arizona. The National League is basically all set. Besides the division winners, we're going to see the wild card in a second. There's only three teams in it, Phillies, Diamondbacks, and Cubs. The next closest team is the Cardinals, and they're a whole eight and a half games out. So the National League is looking already like all the teams for the playoffs are set here at the trade deadline. I mean, anything can happen, but it is looking that way. That is for sure. Let's see how our guys are doing. And we got Andrew Benintendi, who's batting 302 with four homers, 27 RBIs. Now, this is a guy I want to trade, and I think I might. The only problem is his contract and three more years of team control would normally be good at 15 million for a 71 overall. It's really not. So we're going to see if we can unload him, but that's the one negative with him. Eloy Jimenez and Luis Robert are not going anywhere, and they're doing great. 304, 21 homers for Eloy Jimenez. 301, 14 homers, and he missed two months for Luis Robert. I'm not going to touch them right now. In the offseason, I'll consider it, but right now I'm doing too good. Gavin Sheets is looking good. 21 homers for him. That's a career high, I think, already for him. And he's not going anywhere. If anything, I really want to get him out of right field and move him to first because right field is just useless. Yoman Kata made the all-star team. He's another guy I might want to trade. Uh, he's got this year and next year, and that's it. And he made the all-star team. He can help someone out at third or second. Close to Montgomery, still sluggish. 208. It's early. He's growing still. We're going to keep him in. Andrew Vaughn, I mean, not a guy I'm really excited about. He's underperforming. If he can help out a team at first base, he can go. If we can get anything for him, that'd be great. We will see Paul DeYoung, you know, he's he's doing what he can. He won't be on the team next season, but for now, he's doing great. We're not going to have anyone better, I guess, at second. Max Stassi is actually overperforming for sure. 279 with nine home runs for Max Stassi. I did not think we were going to get that kind of production. In terms of our starting pitching, another guy I'm looking, I might trade here. He's got this year and next year of control, and he's pitching phenomenal. 124 and two-thirds inning, and he's got a sub-three ERA. And like we said, he's got next year of team control. He can really help a team out. He's only 27 years old. He can really help one of those playoff teams out, I think, especially with the way he's been pitching. So don't be surprised if you see Michael Kopech being moved in the next episode. Let me know what you guys think about that, but I am heavily, heavily leaning towards that way. Jake Woodford, he's come back down to earth. He's got the ERA in the fours. Same thing with Mike Sororka. Four ERA for him as well. Garrett Crochet is finding his own out of that bullpen. He lowered it from 4.89 to 4.06 over the course of this month. Uh, but he's still, you know, I still don't know if I want to start him or make him my closer. I need some bullpen pieces for the future, and I don't have any. And I, it looks like I have a lot of starters coming through, especially with the draft that just happened. Drew Thorpe, Jairo Uriarte, Noah Schultz. Maybe it would be best to put Crochet in the bullpen. That's what I'm thinking. Let me know. But anyway, Tuki Toussaint is about to go down. He's horrible. Chris Flexen's doing whatever in long relief. Joe Barlow. So this is going to be funny. We're going to make Joe Barlow our closer because Brebbia, I can't stand the sight of him. It just hurt to watch. We're just going to make Joe Bar Barlow our closer now. See how that goes for a little bit. Brebbia is not even doing that bad, but you know when he comes into close, it's just, oh, forget it. Tanner Banks is not doing great, but we need lefties. So. He might be on the team for a little bit. Dominic Leone's really good. He might be next for, to close if it doesn't work out with Joe Barlow. So, yeah, maybe he'll be next in line to close games. I think I'll move him to the setup row. Why not? Get him a little prep for that for when Joe Barlow does bad. Steve Wilson, you know, he came over from San Diego. He's doing okay. Jesse Chavez is all right. And then Joe Barlow is doing good. But we'll see how he does uh, when it comes to closing games. But, yeah, anyway... In the next episode, we're going to make some trades to start off the episode. And then we'll pretty much have two more episodes left of the first season. You know, we'll have uh, August and September, and then it should be over. We'll wrap it up. We'll have a big off season, hopefully, at least. We'll make some moves, and we'll get into next season where are we going to compete for a championship? Probably not, but are we going to be a little bit better? I would hope so. At least I would hope that the team is taking shape into what it should be. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. I'll see you guys in the next one.